When are we going to get back to normal? That's the question on everyone's mind, and we're ready for this horrid virus to go away and allow our world to get back to work again. But I've heard many people in the last month say, I just wish we could go back to the good old days. And in between this world and the next, between the now and the not yet, I often wax nostalgic myself. I can spend hours on genealogy, old sports stories, accounts of heroes and battle. I'm the kind that loves walking through old cemeteries and old battlegrounds. But the truth is, sometimes I romanticize the past. I compare it to today and wonder why the world, the country, the church is falling apart and why things had to change. It was so much better the way we used to do it, I can say to myself with a smirk. But it's the arrogance of every generation that comes along to think that they have finally righted all the wrongs of the previous generation and that things will never get any better than this. Ecclesiastes 7.10 warns us of such foolishness as it says, Do not say, why were the old days better than these? For it is not wise to ask such questions. Rick Roadheaver says that when we think the past was better than the present, in some way, we are denying the reality of God in the present. If I truly think things are worse today, then I'm acting like God is no longer in control. It is not wise to say, why were the old days better than these? It is unwise because such a question forgets God. It also assumes that I think God is not doing a very good job of running the world today. It shows that I am blind to the good things of the present and ignorant of past evils. Hey, the past is never as good as we remember nor is it as bad as we remember. It's just the past. We watch an old movie and think, wow, what it must have been like to live in the 40s. Well, think about that. Sure, the music might have been fun, but they were sending their sons off to war, 16 million of them to be exact. Basic items like sugar, meat, rubber for tires, canned goods, and other things were rationed and you couldn't always buy them. And there wasn't a vaccine for polio. Still want to go back and live in a pre-air conditioning era in Houston? My memories, sweet remembrances of things long ago are, as C.S. Lewis said, only the scent of a flower I have yet to find, the echo of a tune I haven't heard yet, news from a far country I have yet to visit. When I experience wistful feelings of nostalgia, it's because my heart is longing for a more beautiful person than I've ever met a more beautiful place than I've ever lived. At that point, God is giving me a glimpse of eternity. Earlier in Ecclesiastes, in chapter 3, the author says God has placed eternity in our hearts. That's true of all of us. We were built for another place. And so when we get that flashing moment of nostalgia, it's like tiny pinpoints of the light of eternity breaking through into our present lives. But what if since scripture says it is so, what if God is using this current time to strengthen us, to develop us, to further prepare us for eternity? I don't think God is trying to teach us that the old days were a lot better than what we have now. I agree with John Piper. What God is doing in the coronavirus is showing us, graphically, painfully, that nothing in this world gives the security and satisfaction that we find in the infinite greatness and worth of knowing Jesus. This global pandemic takes away our freedom of movement, our business activity, and our face-to-face -face relations. It takes away our security and our comfort. And in the end, it may take away our lives. The reason God exposes us to such losses is to rouse us to rely on Jesus alone. And another of God's purposes in the coronavirus is that his people put to death self-pity and fear and give themselves to good deeds in the presence of danger. Christians lean in toward need, not comfort, toward love, not safety. So yes, pray for an end to the virus, and we recognize we're on God's timetable. He's greater than the storm of the sickness around us. But ask God to use this time in your life to further shape and mold you for eternity. Pray with me, will you? Oh, Father, as we take a collective breath together, do not waste our, mis our misery and grief, O oh Lord. Purify your people from powerless preoccupation with barren materialism and Christless entertainment. 
put our mouths out of taste with the bait of Satan. Cut us from the roots and remnant of pride and hate and unjust ways. Grant us capacities of outrage and our own belittling of your glory. Open the eyes of our hearts to see and savor the beauty of Christ. Incline our hearts to your word, your son, and your way. Fill us with compassionate courage and make a name for yourself, O Lord, in the way your people serve. Help us not fix our gaze backward toward the past, but upward toward our future in our eternal home with you. In Jesus' name, amen.